If there's one piece of equipment that has really made an impact on helping hundreds of landowners transform their hunting property the last few years, it's the forestry mulcher. In areas with poor soils or soft ground, the mulcher is a much better option than a dozer or excavator because it doesn't displace the thin layer of organic matter covering sandy ground and doesn't leave big holes to be filled after destumping big root balls, generating all the debris that needs to be burned, buried, or piled up. The mulcher is a fast, clean option that barely leaves a footprint. It can literally run circles around the dozer. That's why so many residential landowners hire mulchers to clean up thick areas around their properties. Is it the best option for every job? No way. Some properties with huge trees don't have enough acres for a logger to mess with. Others have too many big humps or big rocks that a mulcher can't deal with. These are places where a dozer or excavator is a better choice. It's definitely not cookie cutter and one size does not fit all. Earlier this year, a landowner with 40 acres in northern Wisconsin near Iron Mountain contacted me to create a new perimeter access trail through his woods along with a few connecting trails to existing food plots. All total, it was going to be about a mile long. I asked him to send me a few ground level photos so I could tell if it was a job for a mulcher or a dozer. Since most of the trees were small and medium sized softwood, it would make sense to use a forestry mulcher. One thing the landowner was concerned about was all the humps or moguls. Would the mulcher be able to level those off? Depends on how high they are. Since this needed to be a one day project, I suggested that I cut the bigger trees ahead of the mulcher so it wouldn't have to waste time cutting and grinding and pushing them out of the way. So last Saturday I met Brandon, the owner of First Choice Food Plot Service at the 40 acre property and we went to work. Since we didn't have a cameraman this day, some of this footage will be from a different property I worked on with thickets last year. Brandon opted to use steel teeth instead of the sharp carbide teeth due to all the rocks and dirt moguls. Good decision by him because there were plenty of rocks at the surface. Trying to stay ahead of the mulcher, I hinge cut and laid down the bigger trees that were in the way cut off the top half of the log and then cut the hinge the rest of the way through so I could flip it over off the trail, saving the mulcher a lot of grinding time. All he had to do was grind the stump flush to the ground. All the smaller trees were ground up in seconds and disappeared by the mulcher. This is literally the fastest way to create access trails or food plot corridors through the woods. Very little impact to the property with no big stumps or root balls to deal with no holes to fill, and no eyesore debris piles to look at. A guy cutting bigger trees with a chainsaw ahead of the mulcher is not always a must, but there is two big advantages. A, you can cover a lot more ground faster by cutting the bigger trees down and flipping them off to the side, or have the mulcher simply push them out of the way. This also saves the mulcher time from going back over the trail twice or three times to clean up all the excess debris. And B, the finished job is a lot cleaner and almost food plot ready. If the trail is strictly for access, then wood chips on the ground is actually a good weed suppressor like you see here. My chainsaw had run out of gas and while filling up, the mulcher kept going ahead of me and ground up a few medium sized trees. Planting seeds under this type of debris is not possible until you first remove it with some sort of rake. So even though this was an access trail that didn't need to be clean, the chainsaw ensured that we'd be able to get the mile plus trail finished in one day. Now while we were working on the back side of the property here up on the north end, I noticed that there was going to be about 80 yards from this new trail down to this food plot edge here. And that would be plenty of room for a cruising buck to sneak in here and cruise the north edge of this food plot. So just to sweeten the pot, I told the landowner I'd draw up a quick plan for him just to illustrate what I was talking about not that he hired me to do a habitat plan I was just there to cut trees but I told him I'd uh, draw up this real quick plan just to show him what I was talking about so I told him if he would create a couple of hinge cuts right here one on the northeast corner one on the northwest corner maybe put another one down over here then he could hang a couple stands right here on the north side of the food plot and another stand on the north side of the food plot here if he leaves a good 50 yards between his stand and that food plot during that last week of October, when the pre-rut starts, these bucks are probably going to come in here and scent check these bedding areas and the food plots. And all they have to do is just walk down the north side of all this with a southerly wind. So if we got that wind coming from the road blowing to the north, it would be real easy for a mature buck to just scent check all of this stuff. And it kind of creates a line of movement right here where it makes it real easy for him 
and he's going to be really efficient at scent checking for does. So this is not a situation where you'd want to be camped out on the food plot edge, right? Because with a southerly wind, that buck is going to sneak in behind you, and if you're right here on the food plot edge, you're going to get busted when he slips behind you, and it's game over, and he'll never take this trail again. So early season, you can come in here, maybe hunt the food plot edge if you're well hidden, but then once we get into that late October time frame where they're seeking, now you want to move off of those food plots, get back about 50, 55, 60 yards, and now those bucks will cruise between you and the food plot as long as you're on the downwind side. A couple other things he's got going here is uh, this little trail that we mulched right here, which is blue, is actually going to be a deer trail. And the landowner is going to come up the line here and climb into one of these stands. Now, he's got a stand right here already in a tree and a big um, conifer. So what he's hoping is that these uh, deer are going to be coming up across from the neighbor's property and into his food plot. Now, he's got a bunch of debris in this food plot that needed to be cleaned up, and he had an excavator there that day. And so they're going to uh, pile this stuff up on the east side of the food plot and then leave an opening here for the deer to get through and then pile up another bunch of debris here. So he's kind of creating a gateway, so it's going to kind of force these deer to go right through here. He'll have a stand here for a south wind, and I suggested that we maybe put a stand here on the south side of that trail for a north wind. And then maybe just to sweeten the pot, he could drop a few trees north of this tree just to keep these deer from sneaking behind them, and another one south of this stand just to keep the deer from getting on the south side of them. So as we were coming up this line here on the east side mulching this trail, this food plot actually kind of went out into the neighbor's property. So I suggested that, you know, he's going to have to block this off with, you know, either trees or he's going to have to plant, you know, some screening or whatever it takes just to block his entrance getting by this food plot here. So hopefully you were able to get a few takeaways from this video. If so, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more videos like this in the future, and we'll see you on the next video.